better batten down the hatches. Some wild weather is hitting Perth. Fortunately, at Seven West Media, the windows are stopping the wind and rain from coming in. Unlike at Casuarina Prison, where 20 teenagers no longer have the luxury of windows because they smashed them all out as part of a week-long rampage that culminated in the riot squad going in on Saturday. Everything about this is dreadful. Well, the kids at Casa, that's the toughest, most secure prison in WA that's home to some of the country's most feared bikies, murderers and rapists because they can't be contained at their regular home at Bankshire Hill. Bankshire Hill isn't a jail per se, it's a youth rehab centre with a bit of wire around it and rather than being patrolled by regular prison officers, it's staffed by well-meaning youth justice workers. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. A few weeks ago, the hardcore group discovered it was very easy to escape from their accommodation area at Bankshire by chiselling the mortar around the bricks in the walls and crawling through the hole. Ah, you've escaped! So Casuarina was the only option. It would appear so. It's a bad option, and as it turned out, a very expensive option. A million bucks in damage is what we're hearing. They turned on all the taps and flooded the place. They ripped the stainless steel toilets out. They learnt that trick at Bankshire Hill and brought the skill set over to Casa. And they smashed up the porcelain toilets that were there and used the shrapnel as missiles. Jeepers. It didn't stop there. There are clear viewing panels in their cell doors. They smash them out, creating holes not big enough to crawl through, but adequate for throwing their own shit at any passing staff. Disgusting! Jail bosses were running out of ideas and on Friday night were so desperate, they sent in a military man with decades of experience to restore order. It's finger licking good. The department said KFC was offered as a reward to the kids who behaved. Said that six of the detainees were given a KFC meal on Friday as a reward for meeting a target of no behavioural incidents for about a week. Turns out the finger licking solution didn't work out as well as they wanted because a day after buckets of KFC were sent in, the mini cream part of Casuarina was completely destroyed. I don't the Special Operations Group, that's the riot squad, which is already down to close to 50% manpower and has better things to do, was sent in. And instead of bringing 11 secret herbs and spices, they brought just two, pepper and capsicum. Did they really spray them? I don't know, but the option would have been on the table, maybe. One of the confusing things is what level of force can be used on these particular kids. They're inside Casuarina, but authority to deal with them doesn't rest with the superintendent of that prison. That's a guy called Jim Shiloh. Here's a fun prison fact. The superintendent of a jail has complete authority over what happens behind the razor wire. Nobody, not even the Premier, can tell them what to do. In fact, if Mark McGowan or any other minister for that matter wants to go inside a West Australian jail, they first need to seek permission from the superintendent. Unlikely to come up at a quiz night, but thank you. So Jim Shiloh has to be on standby in case the riots at Kaza spill out into the broader population, but on Saturday when it kicked off, he couldn't actually make any decisions. It was up to representatives of Bankshire Hill who are camped on his turf. So no clear line of authority. Two completely different pieces of legislation are now being applied within the one prison. And that's just the start of the dysfunction. Not only do we have two prison bosses operating under different laws within one jail, they each have two bosses. Most government departments have a director general. Some have a commissioner. The Department of Corrective Services has a director general and a commissioner. So who's actually top dog? Well, the chart shows the commissioner is below the DG. Oh, oh, oh. But sometimes the commissioner, a guy called Mike Reynolds, can act completely autonomously from director general Adam Thomason. Oh, oh. Such as with loss of confidence in prison officers who are suspected of being corrupt. And here's the thing, those two bosses ultimately answer to two different ministers. John Quigley is Minister for Justice and Bill Johnston is Minister for Corrective Services. They're smiling in the latest Justice Annual Report, but in actual fact, they hate each other's guts because of something that happened in Shadow Cabinet in 2016. Back then, Bill was one of a half a dozen Labor MPs who wanted to knife McGowan and install former Federal Labor Minister Stephen Smith as leader of their party. Bill and his factional allies had a WhatsApp group going, I don't know the name of the group, but you can hazard a guess. They didn't realise that Quigley was still part of the chat even though he had defected from their camp and he was feeding information about the gunpowder plot straight to McGowan. Hello. If someone says something bad about you, you'd want me to tell you, right? No. In one cabinet meeting in 2016, when Johnston professed loyalty to McGowan, Quigley outed him. Oh my 
God, she's so annoying. I know, just get rid of her. So the dysfunction goes all the way to the top. Johnson's the fall guy at the moment. He's in charge of prisons, so has to take responsibility. But the reality is the Department of Corrective Services isn't the only government agency that should take responsibility. Before these kids were failed by the Justice Department or Corrective Services, they were failed by the Department of Communities, Department of Education, and most likely the Department of Health. Bill's cleaning up a mess that started 15 or 17 years ago for these kids. Some of them are the most damaged in the community. Some have been born with fetal alcohol syndrome. Some will have had the shit beaten out of them or worse. And some will be from really dysfunctional families. The Prison Officers Union is saying WTF to KFC is saying the fast food reward was a failure of Parenting 101. Do not reward bad behaviour. It was a good soundbite by union boss Andy Smith, but a bit cute because the department was trying to reward kids for behaving well. The writing's on the wall for Johnston. Almost. McGowan needs a circuit breaker and the health portfolio mess shows he's fine to put a bullet in someone when he needs to. And I'm sure Bill would be devastated when that decision is made. <laughs> you reckon he doesn't want the prison's portfolio? Nobody wants to be Minister for Corrective Services. There's no good news here. The best you can hope for is slightly less bad news. And he's got other problems. As well as trying to sort out the Bankshire Hill kids, Johnson is negotiating a landmark government wages deal as Industrial Relations Minister. He's trying to keep the lights on while closing Collie Power Stations as Energy Minister, and he's doing his best to pay for it all by keeping the state's resources sector going as Mines Minister. That's a pretty full dance card. <laughs> and all you have to do is criticise him and remember to say, I'm Ben Harvey. You blew it, boy! You really blew it! I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.